All right, let's uh, get started with the next lecture, which is the thirty-fourth lecture of this course. And you may recollect that last time we had derived the an expression for finding the loss of head in a pipe and that was head loss equal to a friction factor f into l v square by 2 gd and that formula is what is known as darcy weisbach formula which is most important for all pipe flow problems now the formula may look just to give you an idea what it was last time maintain continuity have a look at this is the formula f into l v square by 2 gd now formula looks fine the only problem you run into that is that the how do i find the value of friction factor so to find the value of friction factor we had to rely on partly on dimensional analysis and more so on fluid mechanics ideas that is the boundary layer theory the difference between the flow past a flat plate and flow through a circle pipe is that you can always change the boundary layer thickness replace that for a pipe as the radius of the pipe and similarly the free stream velocity capital u for a flat plate will be replaced by the center line velocity and there are some amount of manipulation and derivations are available which finally leads to very important relationships for the friction factor and that also i discussed in the last class and what it says here if you see for a smooth pipe the friction factor is given by this in fact this has been derived by prandtl and karman's it is known as karman's resistance equation similarly for rough pipes you have this but if you have a close look at the two you will find that in case of a smooth pipe the friction factor although it appears on both sides that means it is uh, implicit relationship yet the friction factor depends on the reynolds number that means if you know the reynolds number by trial you can go on checking this relationship find a suitable value of the friction factor so the lesson here is for smooth pipes friction factor is a function of the reynolds number when i say reynolds number what does that physically tell you that means viscosity is in picture because reynolds number is the ratio of inertia force by viscous force so if it depends on that means viscous force viscosity is in picture in contrast have a look at the rough pipe here friction factor is a first it is explicit function second it depends only on the relative roughness height r not by k sometimes people write diameter of the pipe divided by k as the relative roughness height in whatever you form you write it ultimately friction factor is a function of the relative roughness height but most of the practical problems fall in between the two neither it is a smooth pipe the behavior of the boundary is neither like a smooth boundary or a smooth pipe nor does it behave like a rough pipe so when the flow changes from smooth turbulent this is meant for smooth turbulent remember this is all both are turbulent flows the first one is known as smooth turbulent flow the second one is known as the rough turbulent flow okay so in a smooth turbulent flow the friction factor again i am reiterating is a function of the viscous forces or the reynolds number it is independent of this now in the transition zone when you use the word transition again you should not get confused because this word is quite common transition transition in general it means that 
it is the change over from one kind to some other kind. You might be aware of the transition from laminar flow to turbulent flow in your laboratory you would have done and that Reynolds number was approximately 2000 or 2300. So that is also called a transition. The meaning of transition there is that flow is changing from laminar to turbulent. Whereas in this context the meaning transition means it is changing from smooth turbulent flow to rough turbulent flow. So the word transition has to be properly interpreted depending on the context. Now in the transition zone that means when it flow changes from smooth to turbulent, rough turbulent flows, there is an empirical relationship proposed by Coolbrook and White and this is also very popular. It is so framed that if it is very high Reynolds number and the pipe behaves like a rough pipe, you will get the same value, similar relationship can be derived from here, it goes here. But in case of a smooth pipe, when the role of relative roughness height is not there, then the same equation will lead to the smooth pipe equation. Or in summary it means that you have this equation, you have this equation and this is the one which connects the two in such a fashion that in the limiting cases you will get this or this. All this can be put in a figure so that it is more convenient to use for practical engineers rather than write equations and that is the one which we are going to discuss today. Interpretation of that figure will be the important item, okay. So let me see how you get these, actually there should be, this paper should always be there as a blank thing. Now before we go just to give an eye, you do not have to remember these numbers, but at least get a feel how they look like. So depending on the material, the kind of a surface you have in for the pipe, the roughness heights are given. You can always convert to this from feet to centimeters or millimeters, that is fine. So as you read this, you find even glass has a roughness height may be very small. As you go in the table down and down, it goes on increasing. Now sometimes it may come to your mind as to how you would measure the height, roughness height. It is easily said that roughness height is so much, but roughness height is not uniformly spread all over a surface, it is a random thing. So how do I give an so in a sense this is an equivalent roughness height, not the actual. What is the meaning of this equivalent roughness height? It means that if I take a pipe okay, of some diameter and conduct experiments, the head loss I would get from that observation. Imagine somehow if I have another pipe which is uniformly roughened with sand grains and conduct a or repeat your experiment, supposing by luck both match, okay. It will not happen but you can always interpolate. But just to explain, I am saying supposing both match, one is your real pipe material, let us say steel pipe. Another one is same diameter but I have roughened it with uniform size sand grains, size is known to you and that I conduct again experiments. Supposing both match, then what would you say that the steel pipe has an equivalent roughness height of the size of the sand. Well, that means you are measuring it in indirect fashion, no way you can measure it direct, some roughness height and say 
this is the roughness height of a surface or a pipe. In fact, it is one of the most difficult parameters. Easily said that you measure the roughness height. Roughness height is always measured in an indirect fashion, means by comparison. Is it okay? Now, these values you do not have to remember, you can go directly to some table and get it. And remember, all these are meant for new pipes. But with aging, as you use the pipe, there will be deposition, the corrosion will be there. So, the pipe which was very smooth to start with, after a couple of years, you will find that the inside is not that smooth. So, with age, the roughness height also increases. Now, there is no theory behind it other than making measurements on pipes of different ages and trying to see how the friction factor or the roughness height increases. All these are again indirect ways of getting the roughness height, but once you have those values, you can always fit a empirical relationship as to how the new value of the roughness height goes on increasing with time may be counted in years. So, empirical expressions are there. So, if you know the new value, you want to find what will be the value of the roughness height after 10 years. Hence, you can always use that empirical relationship and predict that will be the roughness height. So, which will be much bigger expected because of the deposition, corrosion and many other factors. Okay. Now comes the most important diagram in pipe flows as far as application is concerned and that is what is known as the Moody's diagram. Okay. The similar diagram is having a different name in Europe, they call that as Stanton diagram. But in the countries where American books are dominant, then you have to call that as the Moody's diagram. Okay, but Moody's diagram is more common, you will understand rather than Stanton diagram. Okay. Does not matter, do not worry about the history, who developed first and who got the credit. Now, here you have a close look. See, interpretation of the Reynolds number role is most important in this diagram. Okay. Now, let us begin, and this is a log scale, so it starts at a very low value, 10 to the power of 3, 7 into 10 to the power of 3, 10 to the power of 3, yeah, 1000. So, here it is maybe a 1000 or so, very small number. So, till the point you are here, 2000, this is the 2000, it is not 7000, it is 0.7 in fact. Okay, 2 is here, 2 into 10 to the power of 3. 2000 is this limiting value starting from here. Since it is a log scale, you will never get a 0, you will get 0 0.01, 0, 0, 001 and so on. Now, if it is a straight line, what does that mean? Remember, in the diagram, the y axis is the friction factor, which is a logarithmic scale. This also is logarithmic scale. Now, if I get in a log log plot, graph sheet, a straight line, what does that mean? See, any y equal to x to the power of n, does not matter whatever be the value of n, you will always get a straight line on a log log scale, because you take log of y equal to n log x, so n is like a slope, but it is a, you are plotting ultimately log y log x, so it becomes linear. Now, if you remember, the relationship between friction factor F and the Reynolds number for a laminar flow. Tell me what was that? F equal to 64 divided by Reynolds number, R A. So, if I plot that on log log, what will happen? Log F will be log of 64, some number minus log Reynolds number. So, if I plot now log f versus log Reynolds number, it is going to be a straight line. 
but the slope will be negative okay slope of the line is negative and that is what is this straight line in fact this straight line you find right up to Reynolds number of 2000 is nothing but the same relationship what we talked now f equal to 64 by r then some little more here kg area is given meaning that is the area or the Reynolds number where flow changes from lamina to turbulent flow. So this part on the left of this is laminar flow. Now in turbulent flow supposing you have a very smooth boundary and with an increase in Reynolds number the friction factor goes on dropping okay. Now if it goes on dropping there is a limit to which this can happen. Supposing you have a slightly roughened pipe and on this axis is the relative roughness height here because some books use epsilon as the roughness height, many books use k as the roughness height all are meaning the same. So it is epsilon by d or it is k by d, k is the roughness height d is the diameter of the pipe and that ratio is what we call as the relative roughness height. So here again keep in mind that the absolute roughness of the surface is not the sole parameter. It is the relative roughness height k by d meaning supposing I have same material steel pipe a small diameter I can have a same material steel pipe but a very big diameter. So what will happen to your k by d for the small diameter pipe it will be k by d will be large for a bigger pipe k by d is small okay and the behavior of this surface does not depend only on k it is rather dependent on k by d relative roughness height okay. A simple day to day example you would have seen I always tell students day to day life what do you see some of the roads are rough so when you go on a scooter whose wheel size is small what do you find it is very bumpy so you feel the road is bad isn't it because it is a rough road same road the fellow comes with a big truck dumper does he ever feel that the roughness height is no it is a smooth for him it is a smooth road so is the case here it is a relative relative to the diameter of the wheel how big is your undulation in the road that matters not just the absolute value. So similar behavior here is is the relative roughness height which matters. Now if you have a careful look let us take any any one roughness relative roughness height let us say point triple zero four okay that is solid line. If I follow this what do I get here just have your attention on this okay. So in the beginning when the Reynolds number is relatively small how does that behave? This is the curve exponential curve depend based on the exponential data. How does that behave that curve? It is closer to the smooth pipe that means it is behaving like a smooth boundary but after a certain Reynolds number let us say here that limit the curve becomes horizontal if it becomes horizontal what does that indicate becomes independent of the Reynolds number that means no more viscous effects it is all due to the roughness height and what do you call that kind of a resistance only due to the you know wake formation or the roughness height flow separation takes place no viscous action that is what we call a rough boundary that is what so beyond this point the entire thing here it becomes independent of Reynolds number but it depends on the friction factor here depends only on k by d if I know I can put the value in the earlier expression find out what is the value of friction factor ultimately your goal is to find the friction factor. So if I know k by d 
all that I do is I go just extend this way, delete it from the left hand side. This axis, what is the value of friction factor? So that is a friction factor for a rough pipe. However, if you happen to be very close here in this range, what will happen? You come along that curve, same curve, and if you happen to be here, all right, somewhere very close, you realize that for any of these relative roughness height, the value of friction factor is nearly the same, not exactly, but nearly the same because it is independent of the roughness height. But if you are somewhere here, halfway, let us say here in this curve, supposing you are here, what do you observe? On this curve, this part of the curve, what does that represent? That the friction factor depends on relative roughness height as well as the Reynolds number on the same curve. If I change the Reynolds number, I will be going friction factor is getting less, less. That means in this range from here to here, that is the transition from smooth turbulent flow to rough turbulent. And this part of the curve is described by your Colebrook White's formula. So this, if you are here, it is a rough pipe. Friction factor depends only on k by d. If you happen to be somewhere very close to this range, then friction factor depends only on the Reynolds number. And depending on which Reynolds number, you go over here, and then you have the friction factor. But you, if you happen to be in the transition zone, the friction factor depends on both on the Reynolds number as well as the relative roughness height. So this is the summary of this figure. So that's why I said interpretation of the figure is very vital. So here, depending on the relative roughness height, you have different points. Here, here, so these points, these points have been joined for your convenience so that all the curves which lie on the right side of this dotted line represent hydraulically rough flow. Agree? See, this is one curve. If I take another curve, this is the point from where it becomes horizontal. Depending on the roughness height, it becomes horizontal much earlier, much for a smaller value of Reynolds. So all these points, if I join, this is a point for your convenience, you join it. This dotted line, anything on to the right of that is a hydraulically rough pipe. And if you are very close to this, somewhere, doesn't matter which curve, but if you are very close to this, then it is a smooth pipe. And if you are somewhere between the two, it is in the transition zone where your roughness height matters as well as the Reynolds number matters. Is it okay? And how to get the value of F? If it is K by D, if it's a rough pipe, it's very simple. Just read the K by D or interpolate, you will not get exact. Interpolate the same point, just go here, read the value of friction factor. With a smooth pipe, Again, you do not have to worry about the roughness height is not in picture. Just read the Reynolds number and read the value of friction factor. But if you are here, then you need to know the Reynolds number as well as the K by D wherever, see this and this, the intersect, that point you take, project it onto the left, you get the friction factor. Is it okay? So once you are clear, so once you use it, there is nothing to remember, it is how you make use of it. Now, the problems related to simple pipe, because in the first course, you have only a simple pipe. In the second course, you have branching of pipes, okay. Then uh, branching of pipes for reservoir, different reservoirs. Then network of pipe network, all that is there in the second course. Since our course here is only simple pipe, simple pipe means straight pipe, but could be of different diameters. Now, 
a grasp of these ideas will come only when you start doing problems on your own. Now many a times you will find in a numerical problem the friction factor will be given to you okay. So the, in fact if it is given there is not much expected out of you because the simple application of Bernoulli's theorem as we will see. But in practice you will not be given the friction factor directly. The material will be given cast iron or galvanized iron or whatever material. So you need to find out from the tables what will be your roughness height. If you know the pipe size you know what is K by D that means relative roughness height okay. That is all you know relative roughness height. But you do not know along this curve whether you are, you are in the rough zone or in the smooth zone or in the transition you have no idea. So how do I proceed based on your experience you need to guess a value of friction factor. Guess means you know the you are going along the curve. So by experience I will say it could be probably somewhere here I take this point project it here get this value of friction factor. Now with this friction factor I go on calculating things. When I say calculating that will help you to find out the discharge hence the velocity in the pipe. Now that you know the velocity in the pipe you are in a better position to know what the Reynolds number is. So now you have a estimate of the Reynolds number anyway you know the K by D wherever these two meet extend this get a revised value of the friction factor. Normally one or two revisions are sufficient you find it will converge very fast it does not vary too much. So that is a kind of a problem but third one again that is there in the other course is you need to find the diameter of the pipe. Diameter is not given to you all that you know is I need to handle so much of flow and the length of the pipe etc material etc will be known. You have to decide on the size of the pipe that is in little more iterative and in that iterative procedure if you end up with a pipe size let us say seven and a half inch okay if you are talking inch because that is more common in pipes seven and a half inch pipe. So in market you cannot get whatever you want so no point in going to decimals and so on. If you go to the market you get a 4 inch pipe, 6 inch pipe, 8 inch pipe, 10 inch or 1 foot or 18 inch. So you, even if you find such accuracy in calculation does not in practice it means nothing. So you need to adopt the larger size. The reason is, is the larger size will automatically take care of your future because in future your roughness will increase you will need a bigger size to handle the same discharge. Well so those will be taught to you in the second course but I have just given you a hint as what lies ahead. Here we are only going to handle a straight pipe when I say straight you could have a bend means same single pipe that is not mean. not straight means do not take me to task yes, you said straight but there is a bend here so that is not issue okay. Let us see, let us take this example. Subsequently I will also show you other examples, solutions will not be given to you, you are supposed to put in effort and get it because I will not give you the solutions. But one I will give just to get a feel what it is, all right. Look at the problem is so simple, just the tank, there is a pipe which narrows down to another pipe there is a valve here okay. And here again let me mention this ones like a valve sudden contraction expansion or any T junction or a bend all these will give you extra loss of energy. This additional loss of energy is what you call the minor losses. Some of they have given the name minor, not necessarily small, but it is a minor losses. 
and these losses can be found only by experiments. So based on the experiments conducted in many of the industries they have prepared a table. You know the nature of the wall, in wall again you have different kinds, the globe wall, gate wall, butterfly wall, many kinds of walls are there, needle wall. So depending on the kind of a wall and the opening, it is not that every wall will have the same head loss. Head loss also depends, same wall depending on whether it is half open, full open or one fourth open head loss will be accordingly be different. So standard practice is to express these head losses at minor, this minor loss at these uh, fittings is k times some coefficient times v square by 2g, v square by 2g is a velocity head. So multiply by a coefficient will give you the loss of head in that fitting. And the value of k, you have to find some table, globe wall for half opening, how much, quarter opening, full opening, the value will be quoted, okay. So now here you have in this case there is a gate wall, but the friction, this coefficient is given somewhere, you can see. So a 8 millimeter pipe, when I say 8 millimeter pipe you have to understand we are talking about 8 millimeter what, what dimension is that, is the length or height or diameter or what is it, 8 millimeter pipe means 8 millimeter diameter pipe, even if you do not sell, when you ask for give me a 2 inch pipe you have to understand you are talking about a 2 inch diameter, okay. So the 800 millimeter pipe leads water from a tank and the 600 million discharges freely into the air. That means you have one pipe here each 200 meters long. So this one is 800 millimeter, this one is 600 millimeter. The total difference in elevation between the tank and the end of the narrow pipe that is 4.5 meters. And the purpose of giving temperature is that you would assume a value of viscosity. So that is remember at 60 degree Fahrenheit, it will be 1 centistoke if it is water, 1 centistoke if it is kinematic viscosity or 1 centipoise, it does not matter. But mostly you will be needing the viscosity nu, kinematic viscosity. So better to remember the 1 centi stoke. So that is known here, friction factor they are given to you. So things have been made simpler, what is the friction factor? Find the rate of flow in a fully open gate wall fitted into this. So somehow I have not given the value of the k value for a gate wall fully open. Normally it will be given, otherwise one has to look into the tables. So what is the procedure first? Systematically think, go step by step. Here again I you know, suggest that you do not simply skip steps, go on putting numbers here, there. it is very difficult to trace back where you have gone wrong. Always go step by step. And when we say it is a step by step evaluation. Unless you give the steps clearly, do not try to you know argue that this step is there, that step by step, the very purpose of step by step is if I should be able to follow what you are doing, you cannot lump together. And if you lump together, if you, are, if you are lucky you get the answer, I presume it is right. But if you lump together, you do not get the answer, I presume somewhere you are wrong. Now what that somewhere is not my duty to locate where you are going wrong, okay, fine. So how do we go about it? Think it, they are all very, if you think logically it is extremely simple, Any little effort you need to put in, one pipe, two pipe, there is a valve, it discharges to the atmosphere, this is a tank, 
difference in elevation is known to you okay of course you can question how is that the straight pipe so much this length is it what about is how I bend it and take it don't worry it could be bend in that case you have to also take the loss in the bend but in general what is the procedure what should I do what are the things that are at your disposal okay what is the total head available you know 4.5 meter and when flow is taking place the total head should be equated to all the losses available energy is 4.5 meters of water that that means in a way you are applying your Bernoulli's principle between this point and this point out okay so you can apply start if you do not really want to make it simple thinking go in a mechanical way apply your Bernoulli's principle so if I take this as data then what happens to your total head here at 1 So what happens to the total head at 1? 4.5 because this is the datum. You, you have the choice. You can take anywhere. But convenience says, okay, I take here. So datum head is 4.5. What happens to a velocity head? Because the tank, you can ignore that. V square by 2g. Okay. Pressure head because it is exposed to atmosphere. Pressure head is 0. So it's 4.5. So 4.5 is equal to the energy here plus losses. Now here what is your datum head? 0. What is the pressure head? Again 0 because it is coming out to atmosphere. So pressure head is 0, datum head is 0. Okay. Then what are the what is the velocity head? V square, V2 square. If you call this pipe as 2 this pipe as 1. So here the velocity is V2 square by 2G plus losses. What are the losses now? You go on systematically go from inlet right up to the exit. So what are the losses? There is a loss as flow enters here at the junction. That is called the entry loss. And entry loss on an average people take it as about 0.5 times V square by 2G. Be careful when V square by 2G is a very general statement. When you are talking about this pipe obviously it will be 0.5 times V1 square by 2G. V square in that pipe. Now this pipe now we are talking is number 1. So V1 square by 2G. Then what happens here? Sudden contraction that also will be some k times the k will be given to you k times v square by v2 square by 2g because in a contraction always you have two velocities one is here one is here by convention they take the velocity in the smaller pipe okay. So that the value of k depends on that. Then there is a wall, okay, V2, V again here when you say loss in the wall is k times V square by 2G, what will be the loss in this particular case? K times V2 square by 2G. That is the only care you need to exert, right, means understand what is that V which stands in general formula K times V square by 2G. So and and finally let us see. So when you write this all the losses and is that all anything else more important loss due to friction. So head loss due to friction will be in this head loss HL1 let us say and what will that be F into L A V square by 2 G into D all referring to pipe 1 
L1, B1, F1, etc. Similarly, from here to here, there will be loss due to friction, and that will be F2, L2, V2 square by 2G, D2. Formula is same, only you are applying for different sizes and lengths of pipes. So, when you write one, now you have two unknowns V1 and V2. So, what else do you do now? How do I get rid of this? So, a continuity equation. So, right in the beginning, you will write A1 V1 equal to A2 V2. So, you know what is the from the given sizes, you can know how much V2 is in terms of V1. And V2 will always be bigger because a narrower pipe, same amount blows. So, that is what happens, right. Let us see quickly. I will look at it. So, V1 is the velocity in the bigger pipe. So, you find V2, A1, which is continuity equation, you will find V2 will be 1.78 times V1. All right, here 4.5 equal to head loss due to friction in 1 plus head loss in friction. Sorry, here it could be 2, okay, not 2, two okay. plus all the losses. Now, here I have not shown, but there should also be a V2 square by 2G. Okay. Now, see term by term head loss due to friction 1. You just plug in the values. Still, you do not know what is V1. That is why 4.5. You just substitute all these lengths, friction factor, diameter. Only be careful about the units. And finally, you get 4.5 V1 square by 2G. Head loss in the second pipe, same thing F, L, only diameters are different V2, but since you get V2 square by 2G, immediately change over to V1 square by 2G, okay. This square comes because of that earlier A1 by A2 ratios. Entrance loss 0.5 times V1 square 2G, loss at sudden contraction, as I said K times V square by 2 V2 square always the narrow pipe is taken by convention. So, it is not 0 0.2 times V1 square by 2G rather V2 square by 2G, okay. Now, you might wonder why should I not take V1 because people have standardized and given this coefficient. So, always they talk in terms of the narrower pipe. Loss at the gate valve, okay. If it is fully open, it is a very small amount K 0.19. Again, it is in 5.2, so V2 square by 2G. All right. Velocity head at exit, V2 square by 2G. Again, I am converting everything to V1 square by 2G. And neglecting the velocity head in the tank from Bernoulli's principle, 4.5 equal to, these are the losses, entry loss, okay. And then 0.63 V square, what was that? Yeah, loss at sudden contraction, then loss at uh, gate valve, and finally, this is the exit loss, means as it or velocity head V2 square by 2G, all right. That V2 square by 2G is same as 3.17 V1 square by 2G. So, it is a very simple matter that V1 equal to this, hence you get discharge, okay. Now, same problem, I could have made it a little more complex by not giving you the friction factors, okay, only you know the material, no friction factor is given to you. So, how do you proceed? Tell me, now by now you should be able to tell me in precise terms, how would I solve the same problem? Here, your life was made easier by giving the friction factor F1 and F2. But I won't give it to you. Only I give you the size of the pipe, length, the material, etc. And ask you to find out the discharge in this setup. So how do I proceed? 
I have explained to you now the thing. No, it will be more complex if you assume the Reynolds number. Do the other way around. You know K by D material. K roughness height depends on the material. So you know K by D. Go to Moody diagram. Make a guess go along that K by D line. You go along that line and mostly it will be in the curve, not because to come here you need a very high Reynolds number. So you are mostly in the curve, in the transition. So if you go along that, make a guess F for F1. Make a guess for F2. Do the same thing, exactly follow what we did here. But after I get this V1, you will be able to calculate Reynolds number in pipe 1. Since V1 is known, you know V2. Hence you also find Reynolds number in pipe 2. So now that you have no Reynolds number in pipe 2, its K by D value, get a revised, more refined value of friction factor F2. Same thing you do for friction factor F1. So that means in reality, what you have done gets multiplied by a factor of 2. You have to do redo the same thing again after refining. And in all likelihood, the friction factor what you get based on the Reynolds number and K by D will not change in the next stitches. Mostly because it is a flat curve. So it does not change much. But at least one iteration you need to do. But when you do that iteration, your experience counts. In the curve you are there. By you know knowing the elevation, you can roughly guess whether it will be closer to the high Reynolds number range that is rough pi or will it be closer to the smooth pi. Okay. So that is the reason why little bit of practice is very helpful. Not that you will not get the final answer, but instead of having one iteration, somebody else if you are not very familiar, make a rough estimate in the very beginning, then you may have to do a second one. Is it okay? So that is the one. Now finally, there are few other problems which I will tell you. I will look at this, think what you should do. There is no solution for this. I have not given you. Although I have the answer, but I will tell you later. Tell me now. Again, it is not a difficult problem because in this part of your syllabus, we can only handle uh, simpler problems. That is why you just see this is a pipe, the pressure is given, the gas pressure is given, 600 kilopascals. I have not shown a gas here. The pressure gauge installed here records so much of pressure. The length of the pipe is given, okay, 500 meters in long. The differential elevation between this pressure gauge point and the exit, water is falling out, out of the end. Okay, that difference elevation is 30 meters. So what you do now? Your aim is find the friction factor. What will I do? Now to find friction factor, what are the things that you need first? F, the head loss equal to F L V square by 2 G into D, alright. So F is unknown, that is what you are asked to find. Head loss is given indirectly, it is not given saying that head loss is so much, but from the data, datum, pressure head, etc you should be able to find what is the head loss between point 1 and 2, okay. Once you know head loss, equate head loss equal to F into length is given to GD, all that is given. Now here, what will be the head loss? Now if you have any kind of a doubt or confusion, always start with your Bernoulli principle, safe bet. So how will I write the Bernoulli principle between the two? Here, P1 by gamma, right? P1 by gamma, pressure head, okay? P1 by gamma plus V1 square by 2G 
plus datum head if I select this as datum it becomes 0 equal to at the other end what is P2 by gamma what is that at the other end what is P2 by gamma 0 because it is all discharging to the atmosphere. So this section is exposed to atmospheric pressure and that pressure gauge pressure is 0. So P2 by gamma is 0 plus what happens to V square by 2G, V2 square by 2G because the uniform pipe V1 square by 2G is same as V2 square by 2G so they will cancel out okay. So plus head loss when you balance. So from there you will be able to get head loss. Use that head loss and find out the friction factor. But although I said do not remember the values of friction factor yet you should get a feel as what that number should look like. When I said do not remember me not the exact value but a friction factor should it be like 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1 or should it be like 0 0.000 something or is it 0 0.025, 0 0.2, 0 0.021 so like that. So that is why when you study the Moody diagram that is carefully you will realize there is a some range in which it should come. So try to get a feel about that range not the exact values that is what I meant when you do not have to remember the numbers and here in all likelihood it will come out the friction factor may come out as 0 0.0 maybe 25, 22 up that or just a guesswork okay 0 0.02 or 0 0.015 these are the normal ranges not very small or very high. So if you get a friction factor 